and welcome to this episode of Citizen Meta One. Today we're going to be looking at how to create poses and animations for our metahumans directly in Unreal Engine using Control Rig. This is our very first Unreal Engine tutorial and I'm really looking forward to getting into it with you. Let's jump right in. So to begin, we're gonna need a MetaHuman. And I would suggest downloading Bridge, going to the MetaHumans tab and picking any of the MetaHumans that you like. All you have to do is select them, download them and click export. When you get them back into Unreal Engine, you're gonna to go to your MetaHumans folder and select the MetaHuman you want. They're gonna look something like this and all you really need to do is make sure that they look good on your computer. You're going to want to click on this LOD sync component and choose zero if your computer can handle it. That's the highest quality. And if it can't, go to one, two, three, four until it runs on your computer. You're going to want to start a new map or level. I'm not going to cover that in this video. And you're going to want to drag out that MetaHuman blueprint and do some sort of lighting setup that allows you to see them fairly well so you can see what you're going to animate. So the first step to actually get animating or posing is to create a new level sequence. I have a folder for all of my sequences and you'll see that I have a lot of sequences because I've been doing a lot of metahuman animation lately. Once you create your sequence, you're going to have a new UI at the bottom and you're going to want to select your metahuman and add them to the sequence. This is going to give you a bunch of new UIs and I'm going to show you how I suggest arranging them and at least this is the way that I like to do it. So we're going to put this animations options menu over there and I'm going to take sequencer and dock it all the way to the left and then get rid of our content browser for now and then bring it back really quickly and we're going to navigate to metahumans common common I believe is the folder and we're looking for the control rig selector. Uh, I think it's called something like that. You're gonna right click it and you're gonna want to run it and then dock this up top here. This is very important. This allows you to easily select the different parts of the control rig for the metahuman body. So let's get into this. Um, we are going to make sure that we have our character selected up there. And then you'll see that you're going to be able to change settings either on the left on the timeline or directly on the control rig selector. In this case, we're going to want to make sure that IK is on for both arms and both legs. That is the way that I prefer to animate in almost all situations. We are going to put a keyframe at frame zero to keep this neutral pose. And then we're going to navigate to frame 30 and start making our pose from there. So the first step that we're going to need to do is get the hands into a good place. So I'm going to grab our right hand IK controller and start moving it around. This controller is represented by a wireframe cube and you are going to be able to move it and rotate it. And I would suggest moving it using world align and rotating it using object align. Next, we're going to also move this little red circle here that controls the elbow. And so we're going to be able to get our hand into a position like that. We're going to do the same process with the left hand here, grabbing the left IK hand, which is again a cube, moving the little circle that will move the elbow into position so it's not inside of the body. And this is very common, very, um, very, very common with any IK hand system is that you're going to move the hand and then unbreak the wrist. The wrist gets kind of crazy and you need to rotate it back into place. So we're getting uh, the left hand now lined up to be able to essentially point at the right hand. So we're spinning it around and you'll see that as you spin that box, as you spin the left hand IK, there's a lot of pretty intricate wrist bone animation happening as well with the twist. And now we're moving into the fingers. This is one of the more delicate processes so in the IK uh, control rig selector on the right there helps pick the different joints that you need to start rotating to make the right hand pose. 
One tip if you've never animated with a rig with metacarpals is that the metacarpals work really well for moving the knuckles around and essentially splaying the fingers. You can also splay the fingers with the first joint as well, but I tend to do a lot of the splaying, so to speak, using the metacarpals. From there, we're just gonna start rotating each finger joint one by one until we get the pose that we like. The thumb is an interesting one. I mostly do uh, with the first thumb joint, as you'll see there. It does most of the work. And then the third joint. I don't use the second thumb joint very much. And then we're gonna spin the hand into place. So now we have the basic pose and I'm gonna add a little bit of style to it. I'm gonna grab the two shoulders here and bring them up. I feel like when I'm doing a full sheesh pose that my shoulders just naturally go up and I'm trying to reflect that here. And as we move the shoulders, it has kind of messed up our hand positioning, but we'll get to those in a second. I'm also gonna grab the head and rotate it back ever so slightly. And then I'm going to start adjusting the spine controls of which there are basically three. And this is really just styling at this point. And we're going to be able to uh, adjust the hands because they've become a, li the, a little bit hyper extended because of the leaning that we've done here. And we're constantly rotating our viewport to see how it looks. At this point, we can do hide manipulators and we can see what the pose looks like without all of the extra controls around. Looking at it from above a little bit and below and from the side, this is a very good start. However, we want to be floating for this one. So I'm going to be using the body offset in this case and raising it off the ground. And now we're gonna take a peek at the IK legs or IK feet and they work just like the IK hands. We're gonna rotate it to rotate the ankle. And then if we move the location of the IK feet, you'll see that the leg bends like this and the hips stay in place. This is the uh, quintessential behavior of any IK rig is that each body part more or less acts independently from the main body. So we're just going to spin around the ankles until we think they look good. I'm messing with the knees here, just like the elbows on the arms. And this is a fairly intuitive system if you take it step by step. I'm now looking at the um, body control here and I'm giving it a bit of a tip backwards, which moves the hips and the whole spine. And then I'm going to continue to adjust um, different parts like the spine and the hips to give it a little bit of an S shape that still feels a little bit balanced here and not so straight up and down. If you find that the poses and animations you're working with metahumans are kind of stiff, then you wanna look at the shoulders and the hips, in my opinion. And this is what the final uh, pose or animation looks like. Now, if you wanna use this animation on your characters later, we can actually export this entire animation out by selecting the body and baking it to an animation. We're going to hit export and we're going to be able to check out our animation asset as you can see right here. The only other thing you wanna do is go to the top left and select the skeleton of the metahuman that you were using. I'm not exactly sure what that does, but I think it scales it properly or something like that. I'm still very much learning this process. So if you wanna put this animation onto another character, onto another metahuman or many metahumans, you just drag out that same blueprint and you're going to select the body, make sure it's using animation asset and you're gonna go find that animation that you just exported. So remember the name of it. You'll see that I have a whole lot of them. Half are ones that I've created and half are ones that are from ALS. And we're gonna select that and put it into the field there. Uh, to make sure that it's there, we can actually change the starting time, which our animation is only about one second is when something happens. And we can even go to 0.5 like that to make sure that it's running. You'll see that if I hit simulate or play that it's going to start looping that animation. And this is the basic workflow of creating a poser animation using control rig and then applying it to a metahuman. So that wraps it up for our first look at creating poses and animations with metahumans. 
I didn't get into making the full bobbing up and down or any of the animation required to do the face. The face is very complicated. There's a lot going on there, but if you give it a few minutes of playing around with the face controls, I'm pretty sure you can give your metahuman the perfect sheesh expression. That wraps it up for this video. Uh, this is our first attempt at making an Unreal Engine video. It's somewhere in between beginner and intermediate. We tried to speed it up so that it was less than 20 minutes because animating, let's face it, can take a very long time. But I'm interested in what you thought as the viewer about this tutorial length and the depth that we went into it. If you end up making any poses with your metahumans, we'd love to see them. So check us out on Instagram at citizenmeta1. Feel free to tag us in those. I would love to see it. I will see you on the next video and hope to be doing more of these Unreal Engine tutorials. Have a good one.